is not just rush hour. This is not just construction. This is not just industry. This is Jacksonville in motion. It's a pulse, a heartbeat. And right now, it's stronger than ever. This is football. But it's also community. It's pride. Family. Generosity. It's entertainment. Ingenuity. Commitment. And more than anything, it's opportunity. Opportunity to play our part in keeping Jacksonville in motion. wins in three years. The Jaguars football brass have been given a win-now vote of confidence from owner Shad Khan for 2016, who says the team has high ambitions. Stadium improvements are underway in the clubs, and a $90 million practice facility amphitheater is in the works. A home game in London is set through 2020, solidifying the Jaguars and Jacksonville's presence in the UK. Is the Jaguars arrow pointing up both on and off the field? A Jaguars all-access look at the state of the franchise next. Hi, everybody, and welcome to Jaguars All Access State of the Franchise. In the next hour, we'll talk about the Jaguars franchise, both on and off the field, what some of the plans are, what the current situation is, and what some of the vision is for the future as well. Joining us here is the owner of the Jaguars, Shad Khan, as well as the president of the club, Mark Lamping, and the general manager, Dave Caldwell. Shad, in, in a simple question, what is the state of the franchise right now? How would you term that? Uh, state of the franchise, it's good getting better but a long way to go and that, mark that's what you had said in the presentation this morning that um you have turned a corner is how you termed it and uh it, but there still is a long way to go i don't i don't think there's any question i mean i i feel good as an organization that we understand a lot better where we are mm -hmm. i think we understand where we need to get to um but we've got a lot of steps between those two points and Chad, you were very specific about the commitment to Jacksonville. In fact, your very opening remarks were, oh, and by the way, it's in Jacksonville, and that's where we're, that's where we're staying. Yep. I think, uh, you know, Sam, I think I met you probably about four years ago, and I, that was an issue that was right at the tip of everybody, everybody's tongue. And, you know, I sh that was my feeling then. It's now that we're going to do everything to make it work, and we're looking for a solution, you know, to stabilize. Dave, what's the state of the franchise when it comes to the football team? Arrow pointing up? Well, we feel like the arrow is pointed up. I think uh, in a lot of uh, respects, we kind of mirror uh, where we are on the business side. They have outperformed us, but uh, we feel like we've turned a corner, too. And um, we know where we're at, and we know where we, where we need to be. And uh, I think we have the means in the offseason to get to where we need to be uh, moving into ne next season. And Mark famously said in London, uh, the the. The fans have clearly outperformed the team, and you agreed with that when I talked to you afterwards. Yes, absolutely. You know, the, the fan support here, and uh, not only in, in Jacksonville, but uh, abroad and in, uh, in London is, has been tremendous. And everywhere you go, everybody's excited about the Jaguars, and, and yet we've only won five games. But we feel like going into the season, uh, we've, we've turned the corner. We have a good young core of players, and uh, we're going to do everything in our power to supplement those young players to, to get us to where we, where we want to be. This morning, the Jaguars had their state of the franchise address, and uh, Shad was introduced by Mark Lamping, and then Mark stood up and uh, spoke for about an hour regarding what the financials are, what the expectations are, and yes, there will be a 3.6 
percent ticket increase, but the value of that also they expect to be uh, higher as well. Let's bring in Kent Justice, who is uh, currently in the newly, well, start of the renovated club, Kent, and it's just one of the projects that they talked about today about how things are going to change as soon as the beginning of next year. Yeah, Sam, one of the changes for us, hard hat zone. It is a construction zone, so hard hats are on. And it's also that uh, sign of progress where the franchise says, please pardon our progress, but it's, it's being uh, built up, it's being created so that it will be a better experience for you. Sam, I think we saw three key uh, focuses come out of the news conference about the state of the franchise. One, as you just mentioned, season ticket prices or individual ticket prices. That average ticket price, that's going to go up, and it has to. Mark Lamping explained why. We also heard that local revenue is increasing and has to continue to grow. And then that continuing the partnerships, both public and private, that's a key because it's going to be good for Jacksonville and the Jaguars. And couldn't be more pleased with the direction that the Jaguars are taking it, but we know it's not something we expect them to do on their own. Positive, immediate feedback following the hour-long presentation Friday, briefly by Jaguars owner Shad Khan and primarily by team president Mark Lamping. To compete with other teams, the Jaguars unveiled a plan to increase average ticket prices. 46% of season ticket holders will see no increase if they renew early, and about a quarter of the seats will increase in price. You heard Mark Lamping talk about today, we're, we're not really on pace with the rest of the NFL. Do we want to see tickets go up? No, but I also want to have a team that's winning and building back for the community and I believe those seats are going to get filled regardless. I mean, we have the most loyal fans here in Jacksonville. Partners like U.S. Assure, Ashley Furniture and Florida Blue, they all say that they're excited about progress for the franchise including renovations this year and additions on the way like the Flex Field and Open Air Covered Theater. Their goal, a stable NFL franchise which drives tourism and entertainment dollars plus community connections for those corporate sponsors. When you look at what we're actually doing and what it will mean for Jacksonville and making it a place, downtown uh, place, a destination place, um, we have to be and everybody will be a part of that and I got to tell you, uh, we're very excited, very excited about partnering with them as we continue to go forward. You know, I spoke with a season ticket holder, somebody who said he was more concerned about, hey, is my seat going to be impacted by the construction and the new U.S. Assure, the, the deck out there? wasn't as concerned about that ticket price because he says it's all about keeping the franchise here and making sure that it's stable and continuing to grow. We also uh, heard an emphasis about the giving back that the uh, foundation, the Jaguars Foundation, touched many, many lives, including, Mark Lamping said, 12,562 veterans who were served. Sam? Ken, an awful lot of enthusiasm as well I mean being in that state of the franchise yeah. uh, I know it's a lot of uh, supporters and and uh, people or sponsors and so forth but I mean uh, you couldn't help but be impressed by all that well, I did. The, the people that I talked to, I talked to some city council folks, but also some of those corporate sponsors or partners, and that's what they said. Hey, this is important to us. We're excited about this because we don't feel like sponsors. We feel like we're part of the team that we're really partnering with the Jaguars. Very Sam. good. Kent, don't go anywhere. Come back to you uh, just in a little while. Uh, Kent Justice reporting from the um, beginning of the renovation of the club. Shad, where, where do the Jaguars fit into your portfolio, so to speak? It's one of your many businesses, and, uh, um, you know, Forbes has you listed as 84th overall. Uh, you've got a lot of uh, time in, invested in Flex and Gate, and that obviously is, uh, mm -hmm. is a big profit center. But where do the Jaguars fit into it for you? Well, um, you know, Sam, I think I was... Uh not even on any list, obviously, four years ago. So kind of tells you the power of NFL. There's a lot of visibility. and uh, But for me, I have a day job. You know, Flexingate is, we've got 20,000 employees, families putting their kids through college, uh, making mortgage payments. I mean, it's something, you know, I've started. It's very vital. Uh, so, uh, you know, I don't lose sight of really what's important. But any business, it's about having the right people in place who are able to sustain it. And I think you're looking at Mark, looking at Dave. I mean, you know, so my job is really, you know, to delegate, not abdicate. <laughs> right. And, uh, you know, 
uh, delegate but not micromanage either. So uh, it's, I think, and you've got to uh, find that balance. And most of my life, I mean, early on, that's what I did. You know, how do you go from a guy in a garage, uh, you know, starting out, probably the place maybe one-sixth of this locker room. And you have the growth, you learn, you know, that's the key thing you learn. So, I mean, it, bottom line, I mean, it, you know, it's a small part, but an important part. By the way, the value of the franchise, according to Forbes, has increased by 53% just in 2015. The Jaguars, according to research, now worth $1.48 billion. We'll expand on that and some of the other things that are changing here at Everbank Field as Jaguars All Access State of the Franchise continues. Already considered one of the best fan experiences in the NFL, more upgrades to Everbank Field are underway. Coming up, we'll talk with Shad Khan about his vision for the stadium and the Shipyards Project and how that might impact the production on the field as Jaguars All Access State of the Franchise continues. An epic citywide event of community service. We're opening the door to the future for these kids who are going to make our community what it's going to be tomorrow. And the kids will look at this and say, hey, somebody cares. Somebody really took the time to make our school pretty. Really making this park a showpiece and a center. They're turning this trail into a, a truly an interactive spot for parents and kids to really enjoy themselves. At the local station, we see the positive. Positively Jacks. While we're using energy in more ways than ever, it's good to know that at FPL, we're using smart technology to keep our costs down so we can keep your bills among the lowest in the nation. To see how we're working to keep bills low, go to FPL.com. Try Little Caesars' new pepperoni and cheese stuffed crust deep, deep dish pizza for just $11. We've stuffed the crust with 77% more cheese and 50% more pepperoni at Little Caesars. Pizza, pizza. So, where are you guys? Using the built-in Wi-Fi in Tina's new Buick. Wow, that doesn't look like a Buick. Okay, who wants smoothies? Is that passion fruit, Jeremy? Yes, with bee pollen. I'll take a passion fruit and anybody else. Hey! Now current lessees, switch to Buick and get a low mileage lease on this 2016 Enclave for around $319 a month with just $319 due at signing. Insurance companies demand prompt and full payment of your premiums. Shouldn't you receive prompt and full payment of your claims? When you don't, you know who to call. Morgan & Morgan, for the people. The Mary Awards honor young women who are active in their faith community and helping others. Go to jackshealth.com slash Mary Awards to nominate a high school senior for her achievement in academics, athletics, leadership, or volunteerism. The deadline is February 16th. Did you give up the internet for 30 days? It's tough. I failed miserably. We have your digital detox without going cold turkey. you got to retrain your brain. Plus, the new way to remove fat without surgery. All new Oz, Monday at 4 on Channel 4. A lot has changed in a decade. Housing, health care, and food are all costing us more. But at FPL, the cost of energy has come down. Today, bills are among the lowest in the nation. To see how we're working to keep bills low, go to FPL.com. Where did it really begin? For African Americans everywhere, what is the rest of the story? What is our unknown heritage and tradition? I'm Jason Allen Carvel. Please join me for a dramatic story. A proud history of African Americans as key players in the first America. America's Untold Journey, Monday at 8 p.m. on Channel 4. Welcome back to Jaguars All Access, State of the Franchise. We're in the beautiful Jaguar locker room, renovated uh, just four years ago. And uh, we haven't turned the sound system on, which is apparently can really rock this place when, uh, when the Jaguars win. There's no question about that. Uh, Mark, you made the presentation today. You showed some, some fabulous artist renderings of what's going to happen. But the construction right now that's happening here at Everbank Field is about the clubs. I had a chance to, to go through a club uh, yesterday with with Chad Johnson your vice president of sales it it's not a renovation it's a reimagining isn't it well it's a total rebuild and uh, you know when you're spending the amount of money between shot and the city of Jacksonville you should you should get those type of results so that work is underway 
right now. And then as part of the uh, amphitheater and flex field project, there's a piece of that that impacts the stadium in the south end zone. You know, that phase of it we're moving forward with this off season. And then finally, the amphitheater and the, and the flex field, uh, once, once a design is complete, then we'll have a much better idea when it's going to be, uh, be completed. But uh, getting close to a final design, but not quite there yet. So a lot of the talk was that it would be done by this coming year, but now you've kind of put it in three phases, right? And the first phase is the clubs? Well, we want to get everything done as fast as we possibly can. Uh, the clubs themselves, the plans are done, and we're executing the construction. The South End Zone project, we can't start until we have a design, and we're getting close to having that design completed. And then once that's done, then we'll know when it's going to get uh, built. And, you know, these are, these are projects, as Shad has reminded me multiple times, that are going to be around for a long time. This is a lot of money. Uh, what we're not going to do is rush into something. We're not going to sacrifice schedule for quality. In fact, I had a chance, as I mentioned, to walk through the beginning of the renovation of the lower club on the west side just yesterday and here's some of my conversation with the VP of sales of the Jaguars Chad Johnson so if we're standing where we are today you would be looking out into the field it'll be all open those concrete walls are coming down all coming down with so glass how high um, the glass will be just above this top um, support system here from this vomitory here Right. All the way down to the opposite side over there will all be open to the field. <laughs> so I think the I mean, idea that completely changes it, it. It becomes a new space. It's, it's two ways, right? So one thing we're doing is bringing the field into the club, right? Yep. You come in the club and you lose what you're here for, the energy of the game and what's going right. on outside. Yeah. So we bring the field inside. Secondly, we bring the resources of the club outside because there'll be bars outside and food vendors on those big patios. Mm -hmm. So now if you're a fan, you don't have to come all the way back in, miss some time of the game and then go back to your seat. You'll have it right outside while you're there. When complete, there won't be a space where you'll go, I'd like to do that, but I can't. No, because you'll be able, whatever it is you want to yeah, do, you'll uh, be able to do it, right? Well, you know, baseball's become that, right? A destination facility where you go all the way around the facility and, and enjoy all the different spaces. And here it's no different. Mm -hmm. Maybe you're spending a quarter in the Bud Zone and then maybe a quarter over in FanDuelville. You get to come here and be out on these awesome decks right at the 50-yard line. What we will create now is three sections of club seats. Right now we have two sections. Right. We have, like right now, we have 111 and 211 above us. Right. What we will now have is section 11, 111 and 211 right. because there will be a second deck right above us so three and unique and different area. sections yes people tend to forget that the stadium has been in its current form in essence for 21 years 21 years, years. yeah right. that's that uh, although we have the best fan experience in the bowl if you don't make the upgrades internally and in, in the interior you're going to miss out eventually and that's yeah. what the stage we are now and so i mean just imagine you're standing here right now and you're looking at the field you know, we, we didn't have that ability a year ago, and now our fans, it's going to completely transform their experience. I think that's a very good way to put it. It's going to transform the experience for the premium seat holders there in the clubs. You guys, though, uh, you're going to do something with Met Park, Shad, something that's, uh, that really hasn't been out there yet? Well, Sam, I think if you, you know, it's always good to look at where we are and where the next steps are. Last year, if you remember, we talked about the shipyards. And that is land that is, you know, has some now um, environmental issues, city is going through it. What we're building here with the, the amphitheater, the multi-purpose field, indoor practice, whatever, uh, is really going to be state of the art. Very iconic, great structure. We want to attract people to it. So where do we go from here while, you know, the shipyard's ground is going through it? logical extension going south with a pedestrian bridge um, above Bay Street under the highway and connect to the land just south of there. So uh, I'm not sure what the technical name is of the land, but you know the land is, uh, doesn't have issues and we could move the whole project a little bit east, start with that and then you know keep moving towards uh, downtown. Going to put a hotel there? I think be logical, quite frankly. I think if we're aspirational, 
what works is really high end or really low end. Mm -hmm. And what we'd want to do is really have a probably very high end hotel, uh, which would draw the crowds, could connect with uh, the amphitheater, the, uh, some of the events. Uh, and would create the economic uh, vibrancy, uh, the, you know, and really bring the riverfront to life. Uh, some of the natural resources Jacksonville has, how do we, you know, monetize them for the area? You called it the River District. I mean, is that going to be like the official name? You know, I don't think so, but that's, uh, that's a pretty descriptive way to describe it, isn't it? Yeah, oh yeah, absolutely. I mean, if you put a hotel there, it's a riverfront hotel. I mean, yeah, it's, exactly. it's right there. How's this impact free agency, Dave? I mean, you, you bring a guy to Jacksonville and you show him these renderings and what's happening in the scoreboards and the stadium and this locker room. It's got to have some impact, doesn't it? It does. It has a, a large amount of impact. And I think the number one thing that Chad brought us in here for to do was to acquire the top talent whether it's on the field or coaching talent. And the number one question that talent asks is, is your owner committed to A, winning, and B, being a first-class organization? And as you've seen here in the last few years, there's no doubt across the league and word has spread that uh, Shad and Mark and the improvements that we have made that we are A, committed to winning, and B, committed to being uh, the top first-class organization in the league. Now, we're going to... You have a chance to talk a lot about the football team, but sure. in terms of guys that you brought in here, whether like we're right by Zane Beetle's locker here and, right. and Jeremy Parnell as well, I mean, when those guys came here, did they go, oh, wait a minute, this is a little different? Yeah, because I think sometimes you come on here on a, on a road trip and you may just stay. By at the, the way, Hyatt. all the banging is the actual construction <laughs> here at the stadium. I so like to hear it. <laughs> exactly. It's the sound sorry. of money. Okay, that's, that's, that's what the it is. sound of money. <laughs> But yeah, they do. And, and what it really does help us do, too, is uh, not only attract free agents, but also keep our guys that we want to be able to keep. You look at Roy Miller, and Derek Marks, guys we brought in on short-term short contracts, and it was very easy for us to keep them because they've seen the effects of Shad in the locker room and, and in the facilities here to say, hey, uh, we're, this is going to be tough to beat anywhere we go. We'd rather stay here. We love Duval. We love Jacksonville. The, the amphitheater project that you presented today is so much more extensive than the original drawings that were shown up. I mean, you're talking about extending the deck out, um, I mean, and putting that flex field in there. Uh, like you said, Shot, it's going to be iconic. It's going to be a thing that identifies the city. Well, Shad kept pushing to be best in class, and uh, you know, I'm sure we're not there yet. I don't think we'll ever get there, but it's the pursuit that's important, and you know, at every turn, you know, Shad's been forcing design improvements and that's why you end up with the stuff he's been involved with not by not by going with the first thing that comes over the transom so the the performers will f basically face the south end zone and there'll be kind of three decks on the back of the stadium uh, and as you mentioned uh, it mimics one of the most famous places in the world right yeah the 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 the, the amphitheater itself, and it's, a, it's, a, it's unfair to even call it an amphitheater, it's an open air theater is really what it is. It's, a, it's an opera house that's, that's in, in a natural environment. And it's been reoriented, so the performers face the back of the, of the stadium, which does a lot of great things, puts mm -hmm. to bed the, the noise issues that uh, have plagued Met Park for so many years. And as it faces, faces the stadium, uh, there are seats at the ground level, but then there are two balconies that are created by extending the main concourse uh, from the Bud Light Zone and then extending the terrace suite, now allowing the terrace suite to open both on the south end as well as the north end of the terrace club. We end up with a, a really nice seating bowl, very intimate, and mimics the seating bowl of Radio City Music Hall in New York, absent Radio City Hall's third balcony. We, we'll only have two. Can we have a Christmas show like they have? Because that's... That's a pretty good show, <laughs> <laughs> if, you've, if you've ever seen that. Oh, I, Shot at, at one point, yeah. maybe a, a year ago, you and I were talking, yeah. not privately, but just the two of us, and I said, you know, did you, ever, did you have to tell the designers to draw bigger? And you said <laughs> several times. And you said something I thought was, was very indicative of, of how you're thinking. You know, a lot of people were thinking strip mall. You're <laughs> thinking Sydney Opera House. Yeah. Uh, uh, something that identifies Jacksonville, yeah. right? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I think... And this will. I think there are a couple elements. Jacksonville is its an estuary. If you look at the roof, the movement, the water, I think, you know, it signifies that absolutely in a great way. 
Um, and, uh, and then, you know, it's the riverfront, uh, the open air, the sunshine. How do you bring all of that into a very, very, you know, unique combination? And that's exactly what we've accomplished. It's, it's hard to believe how underutilized our river is. And this would be one of the very, you know, premier, the premier project on the river. Literally, you almost would move, end up moving the focus of downtown east, right? I mean, a lot of people, this, this would be a place that drew people specifically. Absolutely. Absolutely. And I think if we have development here um, around it, you know, it's going to add the vitality, the energy, the people, the money. Uh, and, you know, as you either are growing or you're dying. I mean, there's, there's nothing that sustains anything at a, you know, it's, uh, at a flat level. By standing still. Yeah. Uh, the Jaguars do have a prize promotion that go along with the state of the franchise. One lucky winner will get a pair of tickets to the first show at the new amphitheater, which we need to come up with a new name for, obviously, and a pair of tickets to the Jaguars home opener in the brand new U.S. Assure Clubs. Enter to win at jaguars.com forward slash franchise. Go to jaguars.com forward slash franchise for your chance to win. One winner will be selected in a random drawing by the Jaguars at noon on February the 8th. So that's uh, coming up just in a couple of weeks. That's, by the way, the day after the Super Bowl. That's a Monday. We will come back with uh, the Jaguars all-access state of the franchise. We're talking football. Gus Bradley has been over at the Senior Bowl. We'll hear how uh, he thinks his extension has an effect on the future of the franchise. That's coming up right after this. News4Jax.com is more connected than ever. See something you like? Click here to share it. See what's trending here. With faster updates, you'll stay one step ahead. News4Jax.com. Download or update the app today. Are you tired of catching rides with people or owing favors? Then come see me at Peppermint Patty at March Motors and ride today. And remember, good credit, bad credit, we don't care. I was here for the beginning. There's the snap, it's low, the placement, the kick is blocked! It's blocked! Unbelievable! For 62 to 7. I was here for thunder and the ball go for Jimmy Smith in the end zone. Touch the key and McCardell sailed into the end zone. For the Hail Mary. Got it and caught. Touchdown. Oh. oh, my gosh. I was here when number five took the reins. Something special happening. Rookie to us. Standing ovation for Blake Bortles. Listen to the crowd. I'll let them know. And when we put up 51. Allen Hurts is loose. Allen Hurts is inside the touchdown. going to be caught for the touchdown, Allen Robinson. And the Jaguars have cracked 50 points. I was here. Where will you be? Everyone at Harold and Hara lives in Jacksonville, um, works in this community. And we understand Jacksonville. It's where we live. It's where our families live. I grew up in Clay County, and it's a pleasure working with people that I love and trust. You will have someone who drives the same roads as you, that attends the same churches as you, that understands the uniqueness to our city. Call us or visit our website, Harold and Harold. Don't settle for less than you deserve. Family Home Center of Lake City is your exclusive factory outlet center, and we commit to you the lowest prices on live oak homes. Homes starting only $29.9. Four bedroom special for only $49.9. And no home compares to live oak homes with two by six wall construction, stainless steel appliances, 84 inch ceramic shower, and much, much more. So remember, it's our guarantee to you that nobody will beat our live oak home prices only here at Family Home Center of Lake City. At March Motors, we offer financing for everyone. So if you're self-employed and you're trying to get a vehicle, give us a call. We'll have you riding within hours, not days. And remember, good credit, bad credit, we don't care. Halle Berry's ex breaks his silence. I'm telling everybody I didn't do it. Baseball great David Justice. He was Halle's first husband. Now he comes out swinging. Next in Sub Edition. Monday at 7.30 on Channel 4.
And welcome back to Jaguars All Access Day to the franchise owner, Shad Khan, President Mark Lamping, General Manager Dave Caldwell here with us in the Jaguar locker room. Dave, you were at the Senior Bowl uh, and you very specifically said, look, we can knock out 110 interviews. You don't want to coach that thing every year because it means you're a bad team. No, but, I, uh, but when you when you do get over there, you really can't take advantage of it. We we do, and um, you know I think they may put us in the Hall of Fame after this week, three years <laughs> in a row. But um, like I told people, we didn't necessarily earn it this year, but we took out, took advantage of the opportunity when it came to us. I think. Um, yeah, it gets us a head start. There's 110 guys that we know probably better than anybody else in the league after this week. And then uh, moving forward, uh, we can really focus on the 97 juniors that came out and uh, and those guys. So we can put some of these guys to bed and, and, and know them and not really have to touch them again until after the combine and really focus our time on the guys that we, we need to do a little bit more work on. Dave, you and Shad decided that uh, Gus Bradley should get an extension. And uh, not only just him, but the entire staff retooled the staff, hired Todd Wash as a defensive coordinator. I mean, what, what about the extension did you think was important and to do it with the timing that you did? Well, I think for the most part, the number one thing is I, I think we have belief in our staff. And uh, we believe in, in Coach Bradley and, and his staff. And uh, we felt like we had this vision of building this team with a, a young talent base, uh, building through the draft. And I think uh, it was only appropriate to allow them to see it through. And um, I think uh, going into next year, you know, as we know, expectations are high. And uh, I think uh, they're going to respond well to it. Shad, you, you went along with this uh, on Dave's recommendation. And you're not somebody outside of Fulham who generally changes your leadership. On it. You, you have a lot of confidence in the people that you hire and you give them a chance to be successful. Yeah, absolutely. And so I think it's the right thing to do. I think when Dave suggested it, you know, I'm on board 100%. Although you have said, and you said today, you agonize during the games when things aren't, uh, aren't going well. And I've been with you during games. As much as you're the owner, you are a true football fan and always have been. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I, you know, I love the sport. I didn't realize, hey, this was a business too, a pretty good business. Okay. But, uh, <laughs> Uh, uh, so I got into it because really of uh, the fun a stage in life as a fan. And plus then, you know, if you were complaining and blaming the man, it was like blaming yourself. So, uh, <laughs> uh, but uh, it's, uh, I, you know, yeah, I mean, I think it's really, certainly this year it has been pretty painful. I mean, you know, three, four weeks before the season ended, we were right in it. Right. and controlled her own destiny and was so close yet so far away. Let's hear from Gus Bradley, who we talked to right after the extension was uh, agreed to, and what he thinks the impact will be on the franchise. I think free agency, what it does show is that the commitment Shad and Dave make and the belief they have in this coaching staff. You know, now there, I don't want to be naive to think that's pretty strong now. What Shad and Dave are doing saying, hey, we believe it's coming together. We believe strongly in this staff. We believe in the direction we're doing so much. We're going to give a year extension. That's pretty strong now. You've said, and you, you told us in London, that... The, the lack of wins on the field hasn't dampened the enthusiasm of sponsorship. Uh, some of it has to do with the staff that you put together and how they're selling the team. But you still feel like that there is a, a groundswell of support for the, for the football team. Well, the sponsors are sophisticated today. And when you enter into a relationship with a sponsor, they're doing that for how it's going to impact their business. Okay? So whether the team wins or loses, that's not necessarily what they judge. What they judge is how it impacts their business. Now, if losing impacts their return on the sponsorship, then of course it has an impact. But, you know, we don't like talking about it because we, we have no control over it. And, you know, why dwell on something that, uh, you know, you can't control? Shad, you redid the owner's box when you first came because as a businessman, not the Jaguar owners, owner, you use the Jaguars <laughs> and you use Fulham uh, in Britain as an entertainment center for your other businesses, right? Well, I think uh, other businesses, but really, you know, I'll tell you, the owner's box in the Jaguars puts together people that would never come together in Jacksonville, mm. okay? Black, white, brown, rich, poor, uh, people who are electing officials, officials who've been elected, a combination of people who would never come together. 
So, and that was really one of the key aspects I had, that, you know, it'd be a crossroad for Jacksonville that wouldn't happen if it wasn't for that box and Jaguars. So you put the guest list together, so to speak, not just, hey, I want to invite this guy and this guy, but with some thought to each game as to who's coming and, and what may be accomplished. There. Absolutely. I, I think, you know, we probably have 160 people, uh, for, you know, on an average game, and we put a lot of thought together. And uh, it just can't be the rich or the powerful or what have you. We will, you know, there are a lot of people, you know, parking cars or unemployed or, um, you know, at different stages in life that we want. And one of the things that had struck me was really the lack of diversity, quite frankly, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, we, you know, to use that to be able to really reflect the community a little bit better. Does he have time to call you during games? Uh, he'll, he'll stop up every once in a while, and I stop, I stop down to see him usually at halftime or, or before the game. and uh, Especially about, the food and drink yeah. is better, okay? So <laughs> you right. can count on Dave being there. Sometimes, okay. depending on how the game's going, I might have to go down there a little bit sooner <laughs> right. or later. But, uh, yeah, and then if, they, if, they, if we win, they get a return invite, right? <laughs> exactly. But, they, you know, there, there is this perception in the league that the owner's sitting there with a hotline to the GM or yeah. to the sidelines. Yeah. Um, that, that's not the case, is it? <laughs> Um, not necessarily. I, I know different organizations are different, and um, but we have constant communication um, throughout the game and, and throughout the week, too. So uh, uh, hopefully there's no major surprises. But if there's an injury or anything like that, I try to keep them informed. You retooled the kind of the staff. Not not any major changes, but sure. obviously brought, brought in Todd Wash. Uh, is that something that, that you guys decided after all that between Gus and you and Shad that he was the right guy? Yeah, I think uh, the biggest thing was Gus had to go through the process and, and really kind of exhaust every possibility to see what was best for the Jaguars going in this year and gave us the best opportunity to win. And looking back with what Todd Wash did with the run game when we promoted him, we went to the late 20s to one of the top five run defenses in the league in yards per carry. And uh, with really the similar same talent that we had the year before. So uh, to say, let's expand his role and let him coordinate the whole thing and, and see if he can have the same uh, effect on the whole defense. He has two extra tools, Dante Fowler healthy, Sanderic Marks healthy. You're expecting both of those to be 100% ready to go when the season starts. Absolutely. I was just watching Dante run this morning, and he's cutting, and he's, he's looking really good. He's lean. He, say he, he feels fast, which is good at this time of year. And uh, his goal is really to come into the offseason program in tip-top shape so he can take it to the next level throughout then. And um, same with Sanderic, in here rehabbing every day and working hard. And, and this, this injury will be a lot easier for him to come back from than the previous one he had. Chad, will you have a a budget in mind or are you willing to spend all the free agency money you have right now to go win games we want to really i think you know which dave and his staff is doing identify what our needs are we want to find the best players and the marketplace determines what the you know what the price is and we want to do it uh, so really not go and blow our wad so to speak we want to find the best players at the best value so we're getting you know the best results on the field but you're going to spend money differently this year. I mean, you've been you've been looking at guys in that second contract, you know, guys like I mentioned Jeremy Parnell, who's a who's a excellent player, who's going to be on your team for five, six sure. or more years. This year, though, uh, with kind of the mandate from Shad let's start winning some games, you can spend money differently on some short-term guys who can help right away. Well, the thing is, is, is we want to do it when we're ready. And now that we feel like we're ready, we have Blake Bortles, we have a quarterback, TJ Yellen running back, a good core of young skill positions on offense, a good young offensive line that's growing. Um, so we're ready to, to now supplement through guys that can take us over to hump. And even if it is for a year or two years, we have eight draft picks where we can get those guys ready for why the, these guys that we sign in free agency uh, kind of bridge the gap. So um, the, the key thing is to have those players available that can help us in free agency. You can't spend if the players aren't available that can help you. So the key is to make sure that uh, they're available and that you, you invest in the right players. Shad, when you announced the extension for Gus Bradley at the very end of it, I think you termed it that the Jaguars have high ambitions. Mm -hmm. um, can you define that for us? Better than 5'11". Okay. <laughs> <laughs> is there a number in your head, or is it is it is it the eye test? What is it? No, I, I think that you feel, uh, to me, it's, you know, you want to win, but you want to have a sustainable, uh, really, franchise. I think 
like, uh, you know, and Jaguars were an example of that. They had their high and low moments, and, you know, you never knew which team was going to show up next year, so to speak. Uh, and uh, we want to be a team that's in contentious every year. And it, you know, you, you got to be able to build a foundation, get some of the key pieces. Quarterback would obviously be a vital uh, player, member of the team. And uh, so, you know, and it should show up on wins and losses, too. You talk about sustainability, right? I mean, as a franchise, economically, you talk about sustainability as a, you know, year in and year out contender. And obviously, uh, that's what you're looking for. We'll take a quick break. And when we come back, we'll talk about London and the Jaguars' relationship with the city of Jacksonville right here on Jaguars All Access, State of the Franchise. A home game in London through 2020 as the team builds their international fan base. Is that paying off for the city as well? And with the Rams in Los Angeles, what's next for the league? More of our conversation with Shad Khan, Mark Lamping, and Dave Caldwell coming up on Jaguars All Access, State of the Franchise. Now that the Zika virus has made it to the United States and cases here in Florida, what do you need to know to protect your family? What if you're pregnant? How can it be passed from person to person? The answer is Monday. He's a soccer great who played on the men's national team, played MLS soccer, and now he's the head coach of the Armada. Tony Miola joins us. And oh, by the way, we're going to tell you how you can win free tickets to an Armada game Monday. The Morning Show on Channel 4 makes mornings happen. Try Little Caesar's new pepperoni and cheese stuffed crust deep, deep dish pizza for just $11. We've stuffed the crust with 77% more cheese and 50% more pepperoni at Little Caesar's. Pizza, pizza. How does Hyundai celebrate being number one in customer loyalty six years in a row? By giving you their absolute best offers during Hyundai's number one sales drive. Buy the 2016 Sonata with zero APR financing. Zero APR. Or get $2,500 in total savings. But it doesn't stop there. Hyundai's giving you more safety, more technology, more value. Oh, and of course, more warranty. Get more for less during Hyundai's number one sales drive at your greater Jacksonville Hyundai dealer. There are lots of reasons to choose Fair and Farah. All you have to do with Farah and Farah is pick up the phone. You get your questions answered. Within an hour at the most, I had gotten an answer. He was there before noon, the same day I called, and that really impressed me. There are very speedy, constant callbacks. They're all up on the technology, you know. They would text me or, or email me. That's incredible. Farah and Farah, protecting you and your family. This is not just about movies. This is about your memories. Are you sure this is legal? I don't know. When you first saw him. I want you to do everything you've got. Harder. <laughs> when you first saw her. I'll be right with you. <laughs> when you first saw it. It's good, man. Yeah. I like it. Yeah. This is your movie network. A lot has changed in a decade. The cost of housing has gone up. Healthcare has gotten more expensive. Even the cost of food has increased. And while we're using energy in more ways than ever, the price you pay for that energy from FPL is lower today than it was 10 years ago. At FPL, we're using smart technology and working more efficiently to keep bills among the lowest in the nation. To see how we're working to keep bills low, go to FPL.com. Next, DT, backstage at the SAG Awards. That's what I was excited about. All the gossip, all the fashion. Plus, Cassidy's daughter, Cassidy Gifford, joins the ET team for Super Bowl 50. Next, DT, Monday at 7 on Channel 4. Welcome back to Jaguars All Access State of the Franchise. The Jaguar owner, Shad Khan, as well as the president, Mark Lamping, and the general manager, Dave Caldwell, here in the Jaguar locker room. What's the first thing you do here in the offseason, Dave? Well, for us, it's a continuation right after the season. And, um, you know, this is kind of our busy season in personnel. We get ready for the combine, uh, free agency in the draft. And uh, our vacation is in our offseason starts uh, May 1st. I don't think a lot of people realize how unique it is how close you and Gus and the, and the scouts and everybody work together 
And you, you had joked at one point that, uh, you know, hey, the coaches finally went on vacation, so I got some work. Yeah, yeah, that's right. It's, it's hard during the season because a lot of things pop up, and in order to really properly evaluate some of these guys in the draft and free agency, you need to have a block of time set apart. And uh, when they're out of the office the last, you know, month or so, it's been really nice where you can just sit down and get your cup of coffee and uh, evaluate a lot of film. The off season is like when you really ramp up. I mean, that's like your busiest time. Well, particularly this year where we've got so many projects here locally. And... Uh, you know, getting ready for today is a big part, but, you know, that's just added on top of the normal stuff that you do. And, you know, we have a big year ahead of us. We have plans that need to be uh, finalized, and we're really getting into sort of the execution stage. Chad, you say delegate, not abdicate, but uh, I do love it when I... I see you one afternoon and the next morning I see you having breakfast in London. I, I just, I mean, it's just the association of that I think is great. But it is, it is one of the things that, I mean, you always have kind of one eye on what, what's going on here. Yeah, of course. Yeah, I think, you know, you have to, you have to have a sense and, uh, and then where you can help. I read recently that when you were a kid mm -hmm. that your family brought you maps of the London underground and it, London's not a new thing for you as an NFL owner. That was something as even as a kid. That was, it was kind of like you called it the shining star on the hill there. That that you wanted. That was a place that you wanted to be a part of. Well, you got to remember. I mean, I was born in Pakistan. Pakistan is uh, pre-partition India, was part of the English Empire for 300 years. East India Trading Company from 1759 or whatever. Uh, so um, you know, if London. Uh, would have been like to Pakistan the way somebody in Appalachia would be looking in New York, okay? <laughs> right. Uh, that, uh, so what would be a big thing, you know, looking at maybe the Empire State Building or Ti uh, Central Park or Times Square or something like that. So the underground system of London, which really goes back a long time, you know, more than 150 years ago, uh, was quite a novelty, you know, and just having a map as to where the stations were and uh, was was quite cool. That's pretty yeah. neat. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah. You also said yeah. that you, when you're there, you spend time in East London. Your your soccer club, your football yeah. team there is in West London. Yeah. You spend time in East London because that's where the best Pakistani restaurants are. <laughs> is that true? Yeah, it's true. I mean, it's. You it's, said that's where the hardcore ones are, right? Uh, yeah, because uh, you know West London is really high end. And East London is really poor. And most of, uh, you know, the immigrants and uh, uh, the lower socioeconomic class is East London. Yeah, they call it uh, kind of hard scrabble. Although, they, yeah. they, you know, the, the Olympics... The Olympics was kind of in East London. It was they tried past to there, reno yeah. renovate yeah, some exactly. of that over there. Yeah. Are, I mean, it's, it's being gentrified, but it's still pretty hardcore. It is as you said, accounts for one out of every $8 in terms of revenue for the Jaguars? It does, and uh, there's a lot of other teams that see the potential that London represents, and our challenges here in Jacksonville are unique, and London makes us so much more stable here in, in Jacksonville, and we really need to be aggressive to protect our position. And you said, uh, interestingly enough, that uh, all of those teams were you know, looking at that and the Jaguars have to protect their position there and obviously sign through 2020 and mm -hmm. you'd like it to be longer than that, but mm -hmm. uh, that, that, that's one of the goals of this franchise. Well, our goal is to do what's, what we have to do, even if it might be perceived as a little different, is to do what's necessary to stabilize the NFL here in Jacksonville. You know, we can't follow the same game plan as every other NFL team. We have unique uh, problems, and they require unique uh, uh, solutions and probably a little bit of uh, creativity. Let's bring Kent Justice back, uh, who uh, spent some time with the president of the city council, Greg Anderson, recently as they taped this week in Jacksonville, which runs this Sunday at 9 o'clock. Kent, Anderson says that the relationship between Jacksonville and the Jaguars has never been stronger. Well, it's interesting. You know, we moved out of the construction zone, but obviously you're talking about a strategy that's got a building block with London. And so I asked the city council president, hey, what do you see? How does the city feel about this relationship and where do you see it starting to pay off? I was fortunate enough to go on the trip uh, this year. Generally, the council president does. And uh, I can tell you it's a working trip. 
So uh, they had us. <laughs> no, <laughs> they had us uh, very, very busy, and uh, we were we were meeting with uh, leaders, business leaders in particular, and telling people in in London and on the continent um, uh, about Jacksonville, about uh, our community, and and what a great place it is to have a business and to to raise a family, and uh, and so we we had an opportunity to do that. Uh, we have started to see some success. We've already had one announcement. There, there are others that are out there that you'll hear about hopefully fairly, fairly soon. So um, I believe it is a, a very important part of uh, the mission. It, it gives us a format to really tell our story in a much broader way. And, and the thing that I think is important to note is that Shad Khan, the owner of the Jacksonville Jaguars, who has businesses all over the world, is an integral part of this. He plays a very important part uh, in terms of providing introductions. When he, he comes to a business meeting, the business meeting is elevated, and, uh, and he's, he's a big proponent for Jacksonville. Mr. Anderson pointing out that, uh, you know, there's a, a tangible connection you'll see with the book caper. The intangible is what we're yet to see and what uh, Mr. Anderson says he hopes we'll see with announcements pretty soon that the Jaguars playing in London can mean Jacksonville with more jobs. Sam? Exactly. Thank you, Kent. Mark, you said today that when you can put Jacksonville and London in the same sentence, it elevates Jacksonville. And when we were in London this past year, you said it's about driving jobs to Jacksonville. Absolutely. Uh, you feel like you're, you're on your way to that? I think uh, London, uh, you know, the economic engine over there has helped Jacksonville big time. Um, and um, I think Deutsche Bank is a great example. There are many, many other examples of really making the calls over there and, you know, getting the visibility and getting some economic benefit out of it. I was amazed this year, you know, we've been there three years now. I was amazed this year that when I walked into the stands at Wembley, that all those jerseys that used to be, you know, Tampa Bay or whatever, every other team, half of them are now Jaguar fans. Yep. And, I mean, people went out and bought jerseys. And I talked to a lot of Brits. Yeah. I mean, I, I ran into a guy who flew in from Abu Dhabi just to see the game. <laughs> and, and I said, why? And he said, well, once Shad committed to us we're committing to him yeah. <laughs> did you get that feeling when you were there absolutely i think you know and i gotta tell you obviously the highlight for me along with uh, i think everybody here in the room was when we won <laughs> and you know it was a very up and down game as you know and when good things were happening to Jaguars, I mean, it is, what a feeling to see 80,000 people cheering. Felt like a home game. It really did. Absolutely. Right. Uh, with all candor, there was more energy than we've had uh, sure. here in the stadium sometimes. Well, in the last four years. Yeah, absolutely. Exactly. Sure. So, um, so, I mean, it was absolutely, for me, it was a, what a unique experience. So, yeah, you feel the energy. And I think just like here, we really want to win at home, especially we want to win away. But... Uh, you know, this was a third year, obviously, uh, we lost the first two in a bad way, and it was great to finally win, you know, over there. So next year we'll do exactly the exact same thing. <laughs> we'll leave at the exact same minute. We'll stay in the exact same hotels. Right. I mean, but when you when you I'd do... like to change a little bit. If we're up by 28 points, I'd like to <laughs> not have it come down to the last two minute right. uh, of drive. But winning, winning there, you know, for the football team, it's a project to go. Sure. I mean, from a business side, it's it's a great business trip. Right. For a football team, it's a giant project, and you you think you may have found the formula. Well, there, we right? did, and uh, you know, when I interviewed for a job here, and, and Mark and Shad, so so nicely put that. If we do it every year, we should have a home field advantage to it. And uh, we know how to do it better than anybody else. And a lot of these teams are doing it once every five years or once once every, you know, how many years. So it should be a home field advantage for us, and, and it is. And, uh, you know, as we continue to be more successful, we'll take wins wherever we can take them. And, uh, but to win over there for the first time was a great feeling, especially the first two years. Uh, the performances weren't very good, and, and the jump out like we did this year was, uh, was a great feeling. You mentioned that it was nice to not hear Jacksonville talked about when this whole Los Angeles thing was coming about. Uh, Mark, you had a close relationship with the people in St. Louis forever. You're, you know, you worked there for an awfully long time. Um, you know Stan Kroenke from the 93 bid to with, when this franchise was, uh, was awarded. What was your general feeling about that as a guy who has such 
close emotional ties to St. Louis. You know, when I said that about, about Jacksonville, it was good to, to not have Jacksonville caught up in that discussion. It wasn't really us, because I mean, we know what we're doing and what we're not doing. It's, it's, it's for the fans and the fan base that has been so unfairly criticized for, for so many years. And, you know, as far as, as far as St. Louis is concerned, I was there when they lost the Big Red, when they lost the, uh, you know, the football Cardinals to Phoenix. And, you know, it's, there's, there's lessons to be learned. And if we don't learn those lessons, then shame on us. Shad, you, you almost own the Rams. Yeah. At, at one point uh, and I mean you're you're an owner in that room with the 31 other owners and the commissioner and uh, did you support the fact that the Rams could move out of St. Louis and and go to Los Angeles well uh, I think uh, you know Sam for me it wasn't a matter of supporting them I mean the you know the lease there was no lease mm -hmm. it, they had a perfect legal right to leave uh, that wasn't the issue uh, I think the question was you know, was, was the offering they had with the stadium, whatever, was better for the NFL or not? That was really the decision. Plain and simple. Yeah. And yeah. You, you, could vote, you could vote that way without an emotional tie to St. Louis based on what the two different offers were. Exactly. Yeah. So Stan Kroenke said that he didn't feel like that St. Louis was viable as an NFL town, the, the fan base. I mean... Come on, they've had, they've had football there for an awful long time. Yeah, so I think you have to ask Stan Kroenke that, you know, Sam? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> okay. <laughs> I will if okay. I get a chance to talk to him. Yeah, so I'll when go you... to an Arsenal game. Maybe I'll see him there. Uh, it would be much harder for you over there, okay? <laughs> yeah, so. So. <laughs> uh, so the relationship, we heard Greg Anderson talk about the relationship between Jacksonville and the Jaguars. It, it's as strong as it, I think, my perception is from the outside looking at both sides that it's as strong as it's it's been since day one when the franchise was given here would you agree with that i would because our interests are aligned i think we found common ground in in doing what's necessary to have downtown jacksonville grow having a healthy nfl team in downtown jacksonville is good for downtown jacksonville having more people living more people working more people visiting downtown Jacksonville is good for downtown Jacksonville and you know we've we've come to the conclusion that what's good for this region and that's having a strong central core business district of downtown if that happens then the Jaguars will get more than their fair share of the benefit from that. Chad you've said from the beginning not just Jacksonville any city that has a vibrant downtown has a chance to to uh, be successful to to have entrepreneurs come there businesses come there uh, that that's an essential part of any city's success absolutely and what makes a vibrant downtown you have to have life 24 uh, 365 okay so if people have to live here eat here go out to a restaurant shop here and what have you but without a vibrant downtown I mean you can't have uh, you know a, a urban area that's the definition so, and, uh, you know, that's something that we need to be a lot better at here. Gentlemen, I really enjoyed it. As always, I wish we could spend this kind of time together all the time. I know you all are busy, and I appreciate the time, Shad and Mark and Dave, that you've given us. And we hope you not only enjoyed it, but learned a little something here from the Jaguars All Access State of the Franchise. Thanks for being here.